Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. Today I will show you guys how you can bulletproof your knees, how you can recover your knees and how you can improve your jumping ability. I have played basketball since I was 12. You guys know me. I'm a center, but I run a lot. So doctors have told me that I have no cartilage in my knee anymore. They have told me I need operations. But though, then I tried everything. I, I worked with many, many different coaches and now I figured out which exercises are the best to prevent your knees and to keep it running. As a young upcoming basketball player or as somebody that just has knee problems, you want to get on those exercises as soon as possible. By the way, we are here in Metcon. That's my gym where I am if I'm not in C5. And check this out. Hi right, guys, the first exercise that will help you with your knee health is the polyquin step up. Excuse me if I don't pronounce it right, but basically what you're doing is you're coming over here and now you go down, you want your knee to be over your toe and then you do that and then eventually, so let's do this, eventually you slowly build up to it so you can do it a little higher like this. So now there will be a lot of people that tell you, especially coaches that are still from the old school telling you no, you don't want to have your knee over your toe. I'm sure that all of you guys uh, hear it, don't have your knee over the toe. That is incorrect though. When, is, when will it be in the game that you will come down and you do the perfect squat position? It will never happen. But when you come down like this, your knees will always go over the toe. If you jump, if you change sides, your knee is always over the toe. So it would be logical and conclusive that you make sure that you train your knees to be over your toe. Okay, let me repeat this again. Polyquin step, step up. You go here, you work your way up slowly, and then you go up. And even if you don't, if you cannot do that, then you just start like this. And you try to get better. Eventually, you build your way up so you can do one that is a little higher without problem. If you can do that, your knees will be much, much stronger and your knees will be much, much better in resisting pressures that happen during the game. The next exercise that I want to show you guys is the ATG split squat. That's from the knees over toe guy. By the way, you can link and watch his videos over here. He's doing it on an even more advanced level than what I'm doing here. But basically what you're trying to do is you trying to be here on a set and then the back foot needs to be straight that's very important the back foot needs to be straight then you go down you see I'm trying to still get my knee over the toe keep this straight keep my upper body straight as well and then go up what that does is it strengthens your knee where you need it to be strengthened but it also lengthens the side the other leg it, the quad, it also lengthens the quads. What you need to do, the problem with basketball players is that we keep going, we keep running and then we keep lifting weights. But if we keep running and we keep lifting weights, what happens to our muscle is the muscle gets shorter and shorter and stiffer and stiffer. And now it pulls the muscle in a position where our knee is not in the optimal spot, right? We are designed evolutionary. Our bodies are designed to be on a certain spot and that's where we're most efficient. But if we're too tight here and our knee gets pulled up, what happens is now the knee is not in the right spot and that's knee pain and that's a lot of problems. That's how you kind of can work on getting gravity or, in, or eventually weight to strengthen this one, but also lengthen this one because this one stays straight, which helps a lot for both knees. So that's why it's a great exercise. And like I said, I tried everything. I tried the Bulgarian split squat. I tried the normal squats. I tried the normal step ups. They all didn't help because I got stronger, but the muscles always got shorter and therefore my knee was hurting more. Now with this exercise, I work on both. And what I like about those exercises, like the polyquin split squat too, is eventually you can level up to it, right? You can now get weight or you can even put a barbell over your shoulder, go down, Keep that back leg straight and then go up again. So you keep working on yourself, you keep increasing the weight and when you increase the weight, you keep making your body stronger and better and more efficient and your muscles 
longer. Now we're getting to a normal squat, but we're gonna do the squat on a sledge. We're going down, we're trying to do the lengthening, which it is, the quad. The gravity is pushing me down with my butt, so I'm, I have a certain stretch. My knees are over my toes again. I can go straight, and then I go up again. And then I go down again, controlled, boom. Get it done, and up. And with this one, it's the same thing. You can do again, get a barbell, or one of those kettlebells and you go down and then again work on it push down and then going up and then you can again move up in weight move up within the exercise and get stronger more mobile better and bulletproof yourself for intense and extreme game situations where you need to make sure everything sticks and is where it needs to be strong and stable. The next muscle that we work on is a muscle that many people forget. It's the tibialis, right? It's the opposite of the calf. So it is a very important muscle, first of all, to keep balance. As a basketball player or as a normal athlete, you work a lot on your calves, but you forget the tibialis. But it's also good when stopping, changing direction and everything. That's where the tibialis is used. So you need to make sure that you work on it. If you work on it, your knees won't hurt that much. That's the experience that I made. So that's basically you're doing it like this. You have this machine and then you go all the way down and then you go up. All the way down and up. You see now this muscle groups, they are really working, which is the opposite of the calf and that helps you a lot. Now, if you guys don't have a machine like that or a tool like that, that helps you to work on it, you can do it in a way that you just stand up. Let me just move this out of the place. My camera team will be mad at me. Just do it! Yes, you can! But it's so important. You stand up, you stay straight, and then you just lift it. You see, that's the same. And the farther you're away, the harder it is to do the, this exercise. And that would be the tibialis. That's a very important muscle group that you need to work on that many, many people forget to, to do and to train. The next exercise I want to show that we tend to forget too, like I said, we have a certain balance, right? We're working on our quads a lot, but we don't really work on our hamstring and Nordics are the best exercise to do this. The problem is a real Nordic would be if I'm going here and then I go all the way down like this and they go all the way up. Even me, I'm not even close to be strong enough to get that yet, but I just started my journey and eventually I will be able to do one Nordic. But if you want to make it easier, you put something in front of you here, put something in front of you here, then you take a band. You put a band on, now it holds you. Now it's not that hard anymore. Now you go down, touch it, ooh, and go up. Right? Let's show it again. You straight, touch it, and up. And eventually you do that going all the way down, which I'm not able to do that yet. And then eventually you do it without the band, and then you're able to do a full Nordic. Let me show it one more time. Hands down, and up. Okay. That would be a Nordic. Very important, our Nordics, because like I said, we're working on our quads a lot. Those hamstrings, they need attention too. And that would be my last exercise that would be important for you guys to learn. Now, those were the five exercises that will help your knees. Now, I'm telling you, this is very important. Don't just follow what I do, right? Think about it logically and think about what makes more sense. For example, I have no cartilage in my knees. I talked to several doctors, one of the best doctors in the world. You know, I, I really wanted to invest in my health and in, in my future as a basketball player. They told me, let's operate. What does that mean? They wanted to cut open my knee, put something in and then stitch it back together and somehow that would make it better. I did not do that. I did those five exercises and I was able to train hard again and play hard again. When I still was in San Miguel my first two years, I was almost not able to practice uh, every day because the next day my swelling was so bad. All those things are solved now for me and now it's just a, a matter of maintenance 
and getting a better understanding of what we're doing. So don't just follow what I do blindly, but know that I have tried everything and I have worked with the best trainers in the world and I have come to figure out that those five exercises are the best. Now, all that stuff I didn't invent, obviously. I was looking for it and I have that stuff from the eight knees over toe guy, Ben. Ben and me were texting sometimes and he has a great channel. Check the channel out here. He's doing the exercises on the next level already. And he's that one coach, that one coach under many, like I have like two, maybe three great coaches, but he's one of the good coaches that I have where the stuff actually works. So try it out. Don't just follow blindly. Don't go too extreme, slowly level up. And before you do anything, if you're uncertain or you don't know what to do, talk to a doctor but i'm telling you out of my experiences fixing the knee problems of my aunt or fixing the knee problems of my teammates or fixing the knee problems of myself this was the stuff that helped me a lot i hope you guys enjoyed this video please subscribe like and share and now like always ball is in your court